Hey there, it's Lisa. How are you? I hope you're having an awesome day today. So I've got a message on my heart today that I just had to bring to you. I couldn't even go on the rest of the day until I did this. So the message today is it's about hope and it's about hope for you, but also who is that young person in your life that is struggling or, you know, this all started yesterday. I'm just going to get right to it. This all started yesterday when uh, I got a, a text message from my son who is uh, 28 years old and he asked me to pray for someone that he had gone to high school with who uh, overdosed and is in critical condition. Um, I think some of the friends thought that he had died but he didn't yet as far as I know and well I say yet but I say and, and I declare in Jesus name and I'd really like you to agree with me that the enemy will not take this young man's life. And so, um, I just, my heart just was broken over this. Once again, you know, we see the enemy going after that generation and the up and coming generation with lies, with deception, with, you know, and then come to find out, my son said to me, you know, mom, the last thing this kid wrote on his Facebook page before this happened is there is no God. Oh my gosh, that just, oh, it angers me because I know that this is the enemy's trick. This is, he wants to keep you blinded. He wants to keep, well, those of you watching this video, you're probably, you know, already believers in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. But how many people in your life aren't? They don't know. And they're blaming the wrong person. They're blaming the wrong one. They're saying, how can God, if, he, if there's a God out there, why would he let this happen? They don't understand. And this is what the Lord put on my heart to share with you today. So you can share this with everybody that you can. You know, Jesus, he's alive today. He's up in heaven and he's watching all of this, right? And he's like, my gosh, they just don't know what, what I did for them. They just don't know. And there's one scripture that the Lord put on my heart today. And I want you to go and look at it for yourself. And it is just this Isaiah 52, 14. And this is what it says. It says his appearance was his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. He was marred on that cross. Let me tell you, if you've seen the passion of the Christ, that was, that was an awesome movie. And, and it's every time I watch it, I would cry beyond belief. But that didn't even do the movie, you know, that didn't even do what happened in real life justice. And Mel Gibson, you know, he rated that movie, um, a rated R movie, because, but he said if he really had gone all the way with what he knows to, you know, really happened to Jesus, people probably wouldn't have gone to watch the movie because Jesus, as the Bible says, his face was completely, he was disfigured. I can't even, I mean, he was completely disfigured. He shed every ounce of blood in his body. He shed he all oh, for you and me. And people, the, the, you know, that don't know him, they're blaming God. And, and right, John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who was up there in heaven with him that came to earth to die for you and me. Right? So that we could be restored to our Heavenly Father. But there's a real devil out there, a real enemy, and he doesn't have horns and a pitchfork. He is decept deceptive. And he's got demons all over the place lying to people and lying to these young ones. And the thing is, is they don't want to know God. They don't want, they don't want to know God because they feel like there's these restrictions that they have to follow in the 10 commandments. And if I don't do this, God's going to punish me. And what they don't understand is no, if they would, <laughs> this is how you can explain it to them. You say, you know what? If you were standing in a crowd right now today and Jesus came walking through that crowd, he would walk right over to you and he would say, you know, um, Joe, I love you. Follow me. What do you think Joe would do? Joe would be like, he would drop to his knees and just cry and say, what? Really? Like after everything I've done, 
Like, I'm, I'm, I feel so dirty. I feel so... And Jesus would say, you're forgiven. Come and follow me, right? Oh my gosh, we've got to help young people to understand that God really loves them. And when they say, but then why? Then why? Because when you don't do things God's way, unfortunately, it's like by default, you attach yourself to a curse. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right, you automatically, by default, you're going to follow your five senses. You're going to do what looks good. You know, any, any doctrine, you know, that comes, you're just going to be like, oh, or whatever you hear on TV or whatever, you know, something all I'm saying is we've really got to let young people know God loves them. Young people, old people, because I, I say older people, anybody that doesn't know the Lord, we've got to give them the good news. What's the good news? It's the good news gospel of victory. It's that Jesus died. He shed every ounce of blood. He was marred beyond recognition. Why? So that you could be restored back to the Father. But there's a real devil out there deceiving people, telling these people, you're no good. You can see how passionate I am about this. You're no good. You're, you know, God's going to punish you. God doesn't love you. He hates you. And he's a liar. He is a liar. So how do you get through to young people? You've got to let them know the truth of God's word. Open up the Bible so it's not even coming from you. God loves you. God loves you so much that he gave his only son. Then flip over to Isaiah 52, 14. He was marred beyond recognition for you, for me. You know, God loves you and me so much that he thought that your life and my life was worth the death of his son, right? Guys, the enemy's real and you know it and I know it, but we don't give glory to the enemy. We don't even focus on, you know, what the enemy's doing. But when we hear stuff like this, you just know instinctively that person doesn't know the Lord. That person doesn't have any clue that God loves them. If anything, they think if there's a God, he's mad at them and he's punishing them. That is such a lie. That is such a deception, right? It's up to us to tell them the truth, the good news, so that they want this Jesus that I am talking about, right? The one and true God, Oh, my Lord. Okay. And then um, there was another scripture, you know, 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be alert, be sober, right? Because the enemy, right, the devil, your adversary, the devil, he roams around seeking who he can devour. So if you don't know the Lord and you're not strong, guess what? That's the one he's going to pounce on. And even if you do know Jesus and you believe in Jesus, but you're not walking and renewing your mind every day that you know the first circumstance that you get or something happens and you're like you know you let the enemy get in your head that's when you're going to feel depression right Jesus was rejected and reviled and despised of men you know the bible says that he was well he was acquainted with grief he knows grief he knows sorrows he knows them because he knows you know, what's in people's heart. And people are not perfect, right? They're just not. You can't expect a human being to just, you know, um, how do I say this? Human beings are going to let you down. That's my point. They may mean well, but they're going to let you down, but the Lord will never let you down. So when you go to him and you are, you know, just, you feel hurt, in your emotions and you you just you know you drop to your knees or you just lay on your bed and you you know you're crying to the Lord do go for it and get it out and let the Holy Spirit minister to you and comfort you he's called the comforter but when you go to God and you cry out to him listen I've done it many many times I do it many many times because sometimes you can't go to a human being because they don't have the answer for you but the Holy Spirit will always have the answer for you always right James 1 5 he says ask the Lord says ask if you need wisdom he will give it to you generously you know what this is the message for today we've got to get the news out to people that don't know the Lord how do you know you you know if people know the Lord just by the way they talk because whatever's in your heart in abundance that's what's going to come out and John 10 10 says the thief the enemy 
the adversary, the devil. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I told my son yesterday, I said, Vince, this is why you, you need to surrender your life to Jesus because I'm telling you right now, God is real. He knows God is real. He's like, I know that, Mom. He's like, I see people, you know, I, I hear about people dropping like flies ever, like all the time. Exactly. And I'm like, and you can be that influence that can steer people to the right, you know, and I know, I mean, I've got a promise from the Lord. My son knows, <laughs> he knows. And many of you, you probably have, you know, adult children and you're, you're waiting on God. And like I said last week, they've been collecting testimonies. God's going to, you know, here's another thing. If you don't know the Lord, how are you going to fight for your kids? How are you going to know to cover them in the blood of Jesus and, you know, just release God's angels of protection over them? How are you going to know how to fight the enemy for your family? Listen, praise is your weapon of warfare. Praise. When you are concerned about your kids and you see them going wayward, you literally need to say out loud, Lord, when these thoughts come to your mind of, of, of craziness and your kids just acting crazy, you just need to say, Lord, I trust you. I know, Father, I ask in Jesus' name, I ask in your name, Lord, that you will turn their heart. You will turn their heart. Let me tell you, you if you are a praying mama or papa, God honors you. God honors you. Just like you know Jesus honored his mother Mary, but we don't put Mary on a statue or on a pedestal. It's Jesus. Even Mary, the last thing recorded in the Bible, you know that that Mary said is whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Right? That's what we need to do. So, anyway, that was the message for today. I hope it's been a blessing. Please share this. And yet, let the people in your life that don't know the Lord, let them know how much God loves them because of what Jesus did, right? God sent Jesus, but Jesus came willingly from his high place in heaven to the earth to model for us what God the Father is really like. Jesus, Jesus was the perfect representation of God the Father. And he said to his disciples, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? God loves you. Jesus loves you. We got to stop blaming the wrong one, right? We got to start, you know, you don't give glory to the enemy. You give glory to God. You, you speak the word of God over your family, over your children. And, and the ones who don't know the Lord, go to them and tell them the good news. How are they ever going to, you know, there's a lot of intercessors out there and I think it's wonderful. But if nobody tells the, the person the good news, how are they ever going to know? Tell them anyway. If they don't receive it from you, at least you planted a seed and God will water it. God will use someone else to water it. Or maybe they'll even come back to you later and say, you know, tell me more. But you do it without judgment. You do it in love. You tell them in love what God did. Because that's how Jesus was with everybody. Right? Let's model our Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, all right, I love you, I bless you in Jesus. Please share this video and let me know how it's been a blessing to you. All right, I love you in Jesus. You're already blessed, Ephesians 1-3, but I bless you too. And I'll talk to you real soon. All right, bye-bye now.